gentlemen, welcome to mock draft number four. I want to get a couple preliminaries out of the way before we get started. Number one, the draft order. Something everybody's going to complain about no matter what. But this week, in order to try to switch things up, we're going to be using Walter Cherapinski's um, draft order from his website, WalterFootball.com. In other words, I just looked at his mock draft and the order he put the teams in just as a way to kind of mix things up so this doesn't get too repetitive. Some of it's going to be repetitive anyways. That's just the nature of this. Um, second thing that I'm pretty pumped up about, uh, the channel's been growing really, really fast. I thank you all very much for that. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And here's why you should do that if you haven't done so yet. We are at 1,665 subscribers as of this recording, which means we are 335 subscribers away from 2,000. When we get to 2,000, the thing that I want to do is everybody that's in the Facebook group, make sure link is in the description, you get into the Facebook group. Um, what I'm going to do is make a video of all the viewers. You guys are going to do the mock draft. And unlike when I've done it in the past where you guys just tell me and then I do a video about it, you're going to record your pick for your team. You're going to send that into me and I'm going to make a video out of that. So that'll be a little... Thank you to you for getting us to 2,000, and um, I'll probably do that every 1,000 just as a big thank you and, and give more people opportunities to be a part of that, uh, to be a part of the channel, to be a part of the video, to, to do something for your team. I think that'd be kind of cool. But we got to get to 2,000, so make sure you hit the subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell notification. Um, and then also make sure you get in the Facebook group, only because that's where I'm going to go and say, hey, who wants to be a part of this? Um, so, again, link is in the description for that. Um, Make sure you leave a comment, whether you like the pick or not, just because I want to learn more about your team. But you have to type in the name of your team. So type in, uh, the Dolphins need blah, 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 right? Or the Dolphins don't need this, and here's why. And the reason is, what I'm going to do when I do my picks is I type in the team name, Dolphins, and I'm going to look through the list and just see what I can learn so that my pick this time is going to be better than last time. Last thing I want to tell you about is the fact that I'm planning on doing these every single week. A lot of people are still, like some of my older videos are ranking really highly, so people are seeing those videos more than some of my newer videos. Make sure this is the most updated video you're watching. So if you're watching this one and you see the date is three weeks ago, I'm going to put a little card over here somewhere that links you to the most recent mock. You can watch this one, but don't be too harsh in the comment sections because, again, these get better every week. So if you don't like it, skip ahead. Maybe watch the one next week and the one after that and then, get, you know, get to the most recent one or whatever. But just try to pay attention to that because I'm getting killed for things that happened. Even some of them from last year, people are commenting like, come on, man, try to pay attention a little bit. I understand if it's from two weeks ago, but, you know, jeez, I don't know. People just like to comment negative stuff, which leads me to the final thing. Please like this video. I know you might not like my pick. I promise you. I'm working real hard on this. Some of these, just the video creation takes, I think last mock took me about 16 hours on top of an entire week of researching each team and all that stuff. So the pick might be garbage. Maybe I forgot something. Maybe I messed something up. But I promise I'm working real hard and I'm going to continue learning with your help about your team. So if you appreciate the work and you want more of this, please hit the like button. And um, that's all I got for you. Let's get it started. With the first pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trevor Lawrence, quarterback, Clemson. I know it's boring, man, and I really thought about mixing it up. And eventually the Jaguars won't be picking number one, at least I hope that's the case. So we can kind of mix it up. But um, I thought about what could I do different. Again, I checked the comment section. Michael Johnson, Dar Darren Green, Eric Green all said Trevor Lawrence or bust. So guess what? Trevor Lawrence it is. Um, and again, with there being no real college season and really good way to evaluate these guys, um, I don't see this changing very much. He's definitely not a perfect prospect, but he's been seen as, I mean, for years now people have been talking about Trevor Lawrence and this kid coming up and how great he is and everything. So it is what it is. Trevor Lawrence to the Jaguars. If you have another thought, let me know. Otherwise, this is what it's going to be for a while. With the second pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. Um, this is the this is exciting because I haven't seen Carolina this high, and Panthers fans probably don't like seeing him this high. But again, I didn't make the order, and if you guys get this high, this is an exciting pick. Now, I'm not ruling out Teddy Bridgewater, but let's be realistic about this. One of two things happened if the Carolina Panthers are picking number two. Number one, Teddy Bridgewater is not the solution. Number two, he got hurt. Considering his injury history and everything else, 
Either way, if you're picking number two, Justin Fields, I think, is the the pick. Now, I saw in my, my first mock this year, Khalil Wesley jumped in the comment section, said he really wants Trevor Lawrence. Pretty unlikely that that happens, although if you get to number two, you could possibly get to number one. But Mr. Steady Cheetah in the old comment section said Justin Fields is not the answer. In fact, I think he commented on both of them saying um, – or excuse me, he said that Lawrence is not the guy. Justin Fields would actually be a much better fit for your scheme. I don't know that to be true necessarily, but either way, pretty exciting to be able to get Justin Fields. And I, I still think Carolina has some building to do, but with the new regime coming in, what could be better than getting this quarterback to build around? And obviously you got great uh, pieces to work with, but um, yeah, Justin Fields quarterback to the Carolina Panthers. With the third pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Washington Footballs, as I will from now on be calling them, select Penny Sewell, offensive tackle, Oregon. I have to assume, outside of those Washington fans that really want a quarterback, which I could understand, this is a dream scenario. This is absolutely fantastic. Damian Moore was in the comments section saying, look, if it ain't Trevor, it better be Sewell. And it, it, it just seems like a perfect pick. First of all, he's maybe the best player in this entire draft, arguably. Premium position and a huge need for the Washington footballs. So um, th this one doesn't get much simpler. Again, if you don't like it, leave a comment. But I would imagine that uh, footballs fans would be doing backflips right now. You guys got to get a team name because this is, this is dumb. I'm really tired of trying to figure out what to say. The Washington team. Come on, man write your senator to force them to, to come up with something the washington wasteland i don't i really don't care just do something the footballs that's what i'm calling them that's that's what you are now you're the footballs with the fourth pick in the 2021 nfl draft the los angeles chargers are going to trade away their pick to the cleveland browns cleveland browns are going to give up a second round pick to move from eight to four and with the fourth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Micah Parsons, linebacker, Penn State. So this was this was tough. First of all, the Chargers and all their fans were, you know, all six of you, were livid that Penny Sewell just went off the board because that was the perfect pick. They're trying and calling and begging and pleading. I'll give you whatever you want. Let me come up and get my guy. And at this point, based on the big board, something else I should have laid out for you, um, Check out Fan to Fan Network. Every single time I do a mock draft, I will have an accompanying article showing you the board that I used to do this. Um, and the offensive tackles are kind of down into the teens, a little bit not a great value at four. So we're going to move back a little bit, try to get a better value for an offensive tackle. For the Browns, it's weird because I, I, I understand why they're picking at eight. It's a team that struggles a lot, but I just I really like the roster. And I feel like they're not going to be drafting here. So it's confusing because on one hand, the, the roster is pretty solid. And just getting an elite linebacker, which is the biggest need, in my opinion, for the team. And, and also, the other cool thing about the Browns is you guys have a lot of your key pieces locked up for a long time. Your wide receivers are locked up. Baker's locked up. All these guys are just, they're going to be there for a while. So it's not like we got to worry about losing these players. So we bring in Micah Parsons, and holy cow. But the problem that I'm having with this pick is if we're at eight, we're not a very good team, and are you really going to trade up and give up a second-round pick for a linebacker? So it, it it's confusing, but I, I just feel like this is such a key, critical piece for this team. I'm just going to pull the trigger. And again, the, the Chargers are begging to move back, and I was trying to find somebody. So we're going to do it. We're, we're going to roll the dice. I know it's given up a lot, but um, again, as far as biggest need and how much we can really upgrade this team... I mean, that there really are no massive holes. It's not a perfect team, but I don't see any, like, glaring, massive, this is a garbage team type holes other than linebacker, and we've now just solved it with an absolute freak in Micah Parsons. With the fifth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Trey Lance, quarterback, North Dakota State. Um, again, the order is what it is. Bears fans are going to be mad because, you know, obviously we feel like we've got a chance here. I'm obviously not mad about it. I think it's a fantastic uh, assessment. Very astute by Mr. Uh, Walter Chiripinski there. Um, but, I mean, the, the reasoning for the pick is fairly obvious. Obviously, we're, we're calling and trying to trade up and everything. But let's think about it. The last time we urgently tried to trade up for a quarterback, there were guys who were kind of at a good value that we could have gotten, just stayed, 
and uh, that were actually better, Pat Mahomes and, and uh, Deshaun Watson and whatnot. So maybe not trading up and just staying at five and picking a guy that's further down the list anyways is the better option to go with. Um, but again, it's, it's relatively obvious. And beyond that, if we're picking at five and we had a terrible season, Ryan Pace is gone. Nagy's probably gone. So we've got a new regime coming in here. We're going in a different direction. And uh, obviously, I don't know who that would be. I don't know who the big names are, but it really doesn't matter. We're hiring somebody else. And what are they going to want to do? They're going to want to rebuild this thing in their image. So a lot of the big name guys, Allen Robinson's probably gone. Um, Trubisky's going to be gone. You know, it's it's a rebuild. So we're starting with our quarterback, Trey Lance. We've got to build up this offensive line. Hopefully we can uh, make some strides here and um, kind of get this thing going because, you know, you were this close, man. You guys were this close. If you just had got the right quarterback, we could be looking at dynasty here with Khalil Mack and that defense. And, oof, it would have just been beautiful. But the one thing you needed to do in a year in which some Hall of Fame quarterbacks were birthed in the first round, some of the better quarterbacks we've seen coming out of that round of that draft, and you got the one bust. And you had the first pick. <laughs> so hopefully this time around... A little bit, but I'm sorry for being so gleeful when I described that to you for the 500th time, but um, it's a little funny, I think. I don't know. I'm sure it'll be better this time around, and uh, the Packers, will, the Jordan Love will be terrible, and, you know, I'm sure that's what's going to happen. <laughs> With the sixth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU. So, if it's me, if I'm in control of this team, I'm looking at Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher. I want that premium piece. I want to keep building, right? We've, we've got some cornerstone pieces, but I want to keep getting some more, and I think we really need that. But the, the comment section has been very clear about what they want. They want Jamar Chase. They want an elite wide receiver to pair with Tua. I understand that. I'm not mad at it. And I think Jamar Chase, you could argue, is a better overall prospect than Gregory Rousseau. Um just in general, I have an issue with. Plus, I mean, it's it's uh, Miami, man. Gregory Russo plays in Miami. It's just, it works for me. But again, I'm going to give the people what they want. And, um, you know, the, well, I'm not going to say that because that sounds mean. But if you don't like it, jump in the comments section. But clearly, I mean, it, you're going to get excited about this, right? It's one of those things where you feel like maybe for a minute you're mad because it's the irresponsible pick. But deep down inside, you're super excited thinking about Tua and Jamar Chase just tearing up the league. You can't be that mad about it. With the seventh pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select Sean Wade, cornerback, Ohio State. Um, and look, the, the secondary in general, I think, for this team is an absolute nightmare. I wouldn't mind getting some more offensive line. I know you've got pieces, and we kind of want to see how some of these guys grow. So this might be a, a decent opportunity to really hammer a need. It's also a premium position. I'm putting cornerback in that premium position spot. And we're going to give this offensive line some time to kind of materialize, see what we've got in the offensive line, see which guys are going to progress and not. And also we've got free agency. You've got interior offensive line we can get in later rounds and whatnot. So I really like the pick um, in terms of need and whatnot. Again, safety would also be an option, but there's not a lot of good ones this early on, and cornerback is just a more premium. And it's just a great value for Sean Wade. So everything just kind of comes together nicely, I think, for the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, I know we went out and got Trey Waynes and Mackenzie Alexander. Let me assure you that is not the solution to anything, even if they play well above anything they ever did in Minnesota, which is what you would need if you're, they're going to play even a little bit okay because they're not good. Um, they're still not long-term solutions, so we're going to get some long-term solutions in Sean Wade. With the eighth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Los Angeles Chargers are back on the clock. And with the eighth pick, the Chargers select Alex Leatherwood, offensive tackle, Alabama. As I said, he's more of a 12, 13 ish range, but I really don't care, man. There's, it's very clear what we need. And I'll, I'll be completely honest. I think the Chargers have a chance of getting Sewell. I think, depending on quarterback play and whatnot, this is a team that's just kind of a nightmare. Obviously, you've got some elite pieces in Bosa and whatnot, but, and Derwin. But I just, I don't know, man. It just feels like a team that needs to be blown up and, and rebuilt. And um, either way, it's a bad spot to be sitting around five-ish because Sewell is 100% gone, and, and unless things change, like guys like Leatherwood have been falling. I mean, Leatherwood, I think, in my last mock went around eight-ish, but since the update, he's fallen quite a bit. So 
Once we get to eight, I'm fine reaching. We need it so bad from eight. If he's 15th, of, I don't care. To get a premier left tackle like Alex Leatherwood, I'm good with it. We got a lot more to do, but um, very, very happy with the pick. With the ninth pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Patrick Sertan, cornerback, Alabama. Um, I had actually penciled in to have the Jets move up and get Gregory Rousseau, but uh, E. Joan, commenter from the, uh, the comment section, said he would lose his mind if the Jets don't get one of the top premier corners. And I, I, I tend to agree that it is a pretty big need. I know Kevin Sands, Sains, whatever, in the comment section said he really wants to go offense, um, but neither oh, offensive line or wide receiver, nothing is really a good value here. I also kind of like your wide receivers. I know you guys have done a lot to bolster that, so I don't know that I really want a wide receiver. I think corner just makes more sense, and with Sertan still sitting on the board, I think it makes a lot of sense. With the 10th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Gregory Rousseau, edge rusher, Miami. I can't in good conscience allow the man to fall out of the top 10, and we are picking 10 right now, and I'm really actually quite happy with the fit. We might have some bigger needs with guys like Chandler Jones already on the outside, but Chandler's already 30 years old, and, you know, again, this is a very old team, and we need to find some younger younger pieces. And, and, and any, any team that's picking early, the the way that my mind works with with building a team is, as I've been saying this whole time, get your cornerstone pieces, man. Get your quarterback, get your tackle, tackles maybe, get your edge rusher, get your corner. Get these pieces, then, then you can start filling in at linebacker and guard and safety and running back or whatever. But if you don't have those pieces, and again, I know you've already got a good pass rusher, but he's going to be gone relatively soon i think he's actually got a contract for some time but still even if he's still around his play is going to be declining so um i think it's the best player available it is a premium piece and there's nothing wrong with having two top tier edge rushers let's get that out of the way right now i don't agree with the idea that you can never have too many pass rushers i think that's stupid to say because of course it's not literally true um but having two fantastic and you've got two now so you're welcome with the 11th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Rondale Moore, wide receiver, Purdue. So this was a really tough call. I kind of hemmed and hawed on this for quite a while. I know a lot of Detroit Lions fans, and rightly so, would like to go defense, and there is some, some work that needs to be done there. But I want to look at the strength of the draft and not reach for need too much. The strength of the draft, there's a few of them, but wide receiver is a major one, meaning you're getting better value. You're much more likely to get a hit. In other words, he's a good player and not a bust. If you play to the strength of the draft, Rondale Moore also, I think, is a really good compliment. I know Kenny Galladay is a great deep threat, so getting a complimentary sort of deep threat guy kind of seems weird, but Rondale Moore is more of your speedster. Kenny Galladay is your big body, you know, Megatron type wide receiver. So it's going to be a pretty good yin and yang. And then the, the biggest thing is we got a lot of guys coming up for contract. And it, not that we have to move away, but it gives us the freedom to look at guys like Marvin Jones and Danny Amendola and say, okay, enough is enough. And we can look at, you know, guys further down like Quintez Cephas and give them some opportunities to prove they deserve to be on the roster without being paranoid that it's going to be Kenny Galladay and a bunch of nobodies. So it's going to free us up in a lot of different ways. It's not helping us to grow as much as if we would just target a massive hole in the roster. But again, it, it does make a lot of sense. And I think we're getting a real stud player. He's got some blazing speed. And I think he's going to have a lot of fun in Detroit. With the 12th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. So first of all, I'm just happy to see New England at 12. Not, I don't mean that in a bad way. I just, I feel like people are putting them too late in these drafts because they've always been at the end of the of the draft. And I, I really have been expecting a regression. But now with all these people opting out, there's almost no doubt. And it's it's a good thing. I, I Legitimately, Patriots fans, I know I'm kind of hostile sometimes because you guys have been so dominant and it's annoying. It's a little tiresome. But um, this really is best case scenario. You know, if you want to get right back on top, it's it's to be higher up on this list. And I don't know if Jalen Waddle is going to necessarily take you over the edge. Getting up a little higher and getting a quarterback would be even better. But 
I had a similar pick last time when I, uh, who was it, Devontae Smith is who I took. But since we're up higher, let's take his Alabama teammate, who's a better wide receiver, Jalen Waddell, and uh, really just get after it. So I like the pick, although if we're going to be drafting higher up, you kind of want to just shoot for the stars a little bit and be like, let's let's get a, a Trey Lance or, or, you know, possibly even higher. I, I don't know that they're going to be bad enough to be drafting one or two to get one of the top, top quarterbacks. But um, either way, at 12, I think this is an ideal pick and a huge need and a fantastic player. And you guys are going to have a top-tier wide receiver that you haven't really had in quite a while. You've had some good ones, but I think Jalen Waddell has a potential to be really, really special. So at 12, the New England Patriots select Jalen Waddell, wide receiver, Alabama. With the 13th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select... Dylan Moses, linebacker, Alabama. So Miami's back on the clock. This is their uh, pick via the Houston Texans. This is the same pick I had last time for their second pick was Dylan Moses. And as much as I'd like to get more of a premium player, we're kind of at that point in the draft where it's the, the, the ability to get guys that I would rather get for Miami are gone. And so you guys really need some help at linebacker. Dylan Moses, as much as I'm unsure that he's actually going to go this high this is where he is on the board right now best value it's a need so when you're looking at it and you see the highest player on your board is here and it's a massive need and the only real objection is i don't really want to take a linebacker i'm just going to take him right i mean it, it's debatable and again if, if you got a, a better idea of who the pa- the <laughs> the dolphins should be taking here throw it in the comment section but just based on the board i'm using and again you can see that board in a few days i'll, I'll have it up um to give you an idea of, of who to take, but uh, so far, Dylan Moses is the guy with that second pick. And I again, I, I don't I don't like it, and I'd like it to be somebody else. But based on the method that I use, he just he just he's just the guy that's sitting there. So that's the way that it goes. With the 14th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars back on the clock select Samuel Cosme, offensive tackle, Texas. So this is their pick via the L.A. Rams. Um, we drafted our quarterback, and now we got to protect him, and it really is just that simple, right? That's the other thing when you're looking at getting cornerstone pieces and all that. When you get your quarterback, you know, tackle and edge rusher and corner are all cornerstone pieces, but the priority is helping your quarterback. And so maybe you can add wide receiver to that list if you want because it helps your quarterback, but Building up an offensive line, I think, is the most important thing. Just don't let him get decimated. If you got a guy that you believe in that's going to be able to help your team and distribute the ball where it needs to go, the most important thing is don't let him get killed back there. Protect him and let him figure it out, right? You want to get him like a tight end or at least one wide receiver or whatever. So if you don't have that, it's definitely an important thing. But still, the number one thing in my mind is offensive line. And I do not have any faith in Robinson or really anybody along that offensive line, at least your tackles. So... A number one on my list of things to do is getting an offensive tackle, so that's what we're going to do. Even if it's a little bit of a reach, not much of one, but a little bit, I'm more than fine with that. With the 15th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select Carlos Basham, edge rusher, Wake Forest. It's another kind of a case where the Giants have a lot of different needs, but there's two kind of competing, not competing, but there's two factors here. Number one is the board as it's laid out, which is, you know, not exactly fitting of some of the needs. And although we probably could go wide receiver or something to that effect, I'm really stuck on this edge rusher thing. I don't like any of your edge rushers. You've got your quarterback. You've you, So you've, you've got some of those pieces, but a lot of people are talking about the Giants are going to surprise people. I don't think until this defense gets fixed, it's going to surprise anybody. I'm, I'm a big Saquon fan. Maybe your quarterback's going to do some stuff. I think your offensive line is fine. You've got good enough weapons, maybe. Not really, but again, the, the, the bigger thing for me is if the Giants are going to surprise anybody, it's going to be because we add pieces like Carlos Basham. Now, whatever you think of him, I don't know. It is a little bit of a reach, and we can go in different directions, but I'm, I'm just stuck on it. I look at your defense, and it's it's just not going to be good enough. It's just not. And, and, and listen, if you had Pat Mahomes at quarterback, maybe you can get away with it, but you don't. So you're going to need help. you got to be more well-rounded when you've got uh, Daniel Jones as your quarterback. So I'm just stuck on this thing, man. And, and again, Giants fans, let me know what you think are bigger needs and preferences and whatnot. But at this point in time, unless that gets fixed, it needs desperately to get fixed. 
with the 16th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Las Vegas Raiders select Marvin Wilson, defensive tackle, Florida State. So just let me give you a picture here because this is how the board is laid out. First of all, this is pick 16. Number nine overall is Marvin Wilson. So I haven't been giving him very much respect. I kind of see him as, as more of a bigger run defense guy, and those guys typically tend to fall. We'll see how it goes. Last I remember, Marvin Wilson, even in the 2019 draft, was later on. So I, it's just a thing up here that I'm, I'm struggling with. But the Raiders do need help up front, right? You got help with your linebackers. Maybe your edge rusher, whose name is escaping me, gets better in his second year. But in general, across that front, I just don't have a lot of love for the guys that you've got. The value is there, but then let's look at the rest of the board. We've got wide receiver, running back, tight end, wide receiver, tight end, tight end. That's how it's laid out. I don't want wide receivers. I don't want running backs. I don't want tight ends. So we either take the number nine overall or we get down into the 20s for finding the right value. It's it's This could not be any easier. In other words, we take Marvin Wilson, which is a big need for this team, or we trade back. No, we're going to take the top 10 player. So congratulations on that one. With the 17th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Pat Fryermuth, tight end, Penn State. So, <laughs> Camel Wolf, whoever he is, has been absolutely shredding me in the comments. Half of them don't make sense and aren't English, but he's very not satisfied with my pick. So, my new life goal is to find a pick that he actually likes. And I was going to go in a different direction. But then I felt like this was better because I didn't want to reach when you've got a guy like this sitting there. Now, the other pick was a defensive player. It was a position of need, so I'm guessing Camel Wolf would have preferred that. But how about another weapon for you? <laughs> you listen, you don't you don't have tight ends, and and Pat Fryermuth is far and away one of the better prospects to come out in a while. Last year's draft wasn't very good, so. Again, it's one of those things where maybe it's not the biggest need, and this offense probably doesn't need help. We should go to the defense, but just picture the offensive line, Dak, Ezekiel Elliott, your completely stacked wide receiver group, and now we're adding Pat Fryermuth. By the way, something to keep in mind, uh, Mr. Mike McCarthy was a former tight end who is obsessed, obsessed with tight ends. He never knew how to use them in Green Bay, and they never had any success in Green Bay, but that doesn't change the fact that he is obsessed with with tight ends. We at one point, I think, carried onto our 53-man roster five tight ends. So you maybe don't like it, but if this was a real scenario where Pat Fryermuth is one of the top prospects available on the board, top three prospects available, um, or we're going to reach for a guy a little bit later who's actually about to go off the board relatively soon, spoiler alert, um, don't be surprised if it's Pat. But hey, Camo Wolf. We think, man, you excited about this one, or are you, you going to trash me again? I don't really care either way, but, you know, it is what it is. I'll get you next time, man. With the 18th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Javon Holland, safety, Oregon. So, yes, that was the guy. I had already had, had him penciled in for the Dallas Cowboys, um, but he is a little bit of a reach. He's, he's down, I don't remember exactly, 21-ish range. Uh, whereas Friar Muth was, you know, much higher on the board. But, um, look, I, I just – Atlanta's another team that needs a lot of help on defense. I think the defensive backs in general are a problem. We did pick up A.J. Terrell last year, so hopefully that will help bolster that DB group a little bit. We got our corner now, hopefully. We'll add uh, Javon Holland to the safety group. I'm just – I'm not really feeling optimistic about Atlanta. It kind of feels sort of like – the Green Bay Packers the last year with Mike McCarthy where he ended up getting fired it just needs to be blown up and, and start over I think that's what Atlanta needs to do but as long as we're going to keep doing this let's just keep swinging at some of our needs and I think safety is definitely one of those groups we should be looking at so Javon Holland safety out of Oregon with the 19th pick in the 2021 NFL draft the Indianapolis Colts are going to accept a trade from the Green Bay Packers who trade from 22 to 19 and with the 19th pick the Green Bay Packers select Rashad Bateman, wide receiver, Minnesota. Um, so <laughs> a lot of Packer fans are very upset with the fact that uh, Green Bay didn't do much in free agency outside of Devin Funches to get a wide receiver. Very furious they didn't get a wide receiver in the draft. And now that Funches has opted out, it's reached a fever pitch with the frustration with the lack of wide receivers. Now, I think the reason they're not going so heavy into it is because of the scheme that Matt LaFleur wants to implement is 
not as heavily focused on wide receiver and the more they implement what they have it's going to be more tight end run plus Devonte plus whatever focused and it, it's going to be okay um regardless i do think there's going to come several times when the offense stalls out because Devonte gets doubled up and there's nowhere else to go so um Considering the way things are going, considering where the board is, there's no real offensive lineman available for the Green Bay Packers. So when the Colts are looking for somebody to trade up, and we know we're not going to get an offensive lineman unless we want to trade back, it's a pretty good opportunity. We're only giving up, I think, a fourth-round pick to move up here um, and to get a really solid wide receiver. So we're just going to pull the trigger. It's, it, again, it's either this or when our pick comes, we trade back. I think it's worth it to move up and get uh, Mr. Bateman. With the 20th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Brock Purdy, quarterback, Iowa State. So this one's really difficult. Last time when I did my mock, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were drafting real, real late. So in other words, we got deep into the playoffs. And so you feel like, let's load up and, and take one more swing at this with, we, with us having one more year with Tom Brady. With us at 20, though... We missed by a decent margin. We technically would have made the playoffs, but um, not by much, and we got eliminated in the wild card round. So, you know, it's one of those things where we're not giving up necessarily, but we do need to focus a little bit more on the future. So we're going to take a swing at quarterback. Then in the later rounds and in free agency, we're going to try to load up and, and come back at this again. But we've really got one more chance, and the odds are really low that we're going to win a Super Bowl. And I don't want to throw away the future entirely by just building around Tom Brady for one year on a very low probability we win and then just completely fall apart. We got to be at least a little bit responsible. So uh, Brock Purdy is a pretty solid value here a little bit later on, but he's a quarterback, so that's fine. Um, and we're just we're, we're going to groom him. Plus, you want to have one year behind Tom Brady. Give this guy an opportunity to sit behind a legend in Tom Brady, uh, one of the more intelligent quarterbacks around to be able to coach him up a bit. And um, it's a it's a sad pick because it feels like you're giving up, but we're not. We're we're taking one more swing, but after that, it's it's purdy time. With the 21st pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Trey Smith, offensive guard, Tennessee. I don't know why they're picking 21, but it is what it is. Things happen, I guess. Either way, that's not my job. Offensive line is obviously a crucial piece for this team. I think it's a well-balanced team, so it's not a matter of we got to go defense or we have to go offense. But I know offensive line is critically important. And I'm just not that impressed with especially the interior of this offensive line. Um, if, if, if nothing else, we're replacing Compton. Compton is not very good, and he's 30-ish, 31-ish. So... It's not a super exciting pick, but we're a good football team. We've got a great defense. We've got a really solid offense. Uh, we're, we're sort of a run first, which means we throw more than we run, but we run a lot more than most teams. And um, I, th I think a guy, a big mauling type of offensive, interior offensive lineman like Trey Smith can really just, again, it seems weird because we already run the ball pretty well, but it, he's, he's going to help us to build on the core of what we do best. And it just kind of makes sense. It's a good value. It's a good player. It's, 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 uh, it's a not a critical piece, but a team that doesn't really need critical core pieces because we've kind of already got that figured out. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL draft, see, it's, it's going, man. You get into the 20s and the brain just starts going. Let me try that again. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Indianapolis Colts back on the clock select Caleb Farley, cornerback, Virginia Tech. I don't know why I was saying fairly before. It was spelled F A R. Um, E-L-Y or something weird and then it's, I, I don't know, I have no idea why that was spelled that way in the thing that I was using but, uh, again, we traded back we picked up a little bit of extra compensation and it's a better value for a guy that for some people, I think uh, the Draft Network, as well as I think if you look at Broshmo's uh, rankings another FTFN guy for cornerback, they had fairly number one um, but what I use is an aggregation, and obviously the draft community is not entirely on board with that assessment yet. But I think the Indianapolis Colts are a team that have a very good roster. They don't have a ton of holes. You know, the, the wide receiver is something to take a look at. I love the offensive line. Tight end is an option. But, again, as far as if there's one thing that's really going to hurt this team, I think, I, I you know, Rivers 
is a good quarterback. I don't know how long he's going to be there, but we don't have a quarterback option. The, the tackles look good. I like your edge rushers. You know, Houston's a little bit old, and I'm not entirely sold on Kimoko Ture, although he had a great outing, very limited sample size. The one area that is critical that I'm not super sure about, I know you got more. I know you got Rocky Sin, who maybe is going to continue to get better. But when you're going out in free agency and getting guys like Xavier Rhodes, that's feels like desperation it sounds like a gm and a coaching staff saying we really need help here and so we have to go do something because xavier rhodes is not a very good football player and he's certainly not a long-term solution so i'm gonna feed off the vibes from the gm and say that cornerback is something that that the uh the organization feels is a really big need that needs to be addressed and we're going to address it with a very very good football player with the 23rd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Creed Humphrey, interior offensive lineman, Oklahoma. Um, I know the biggest objection is going to be that Creed Humphrey is a center. We already drafted a center. We're not going to draft Creed Humphrey. Creed, one of these guys is going to guard. It's, it's that simple. We need help on the offensive line, I think, especially interior offensive line. Um Creed Humphrey is by far, I, I shouldn't say that, he, he's a guy that many people think could be gone long before this, even as an interior player, which is a position that tends to fall, but um, it's it's kind of just a no-brainer pick for me. Um, there are some more needs sort of developing for this team, especially along the defensive line, cornerback, et cetera, et cetera, but if you look at the needs that we have, you look at the offense that, similar to the 49ers, kind of revolves around the outside zone run. Uh, we don't know if Dalvin, uh, Dalvin Cook's coming back. I mean, he's probably going to play this year, but we're talking about 2021. It just feels like the right pick. Again, there might be bigger needs, but based on the board and everything else, it's a really, really, really solid pick that's almost assuredly going to upgrade a critical component of this offense. With the 24th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Paulson Adebo, cornerback, Stanford. Corners are really tough thing to figure out. The, the Broncos in general are, are tough to figure out. It seems like a lot of you guys really like your quarterback. Not that that's an, not an option, but if you got that and you've got your running back and you've got the, the offense, kind of seems fine. And then you look at defense, and is, corner is just confusing because you've got some key pieces that I think are going to be really good, but they're older and soon to be free agents. And then you've got some younger players. But they haven't really shown very much. So this is obviously one of those things that's going to have to be reevaluated after this year. The, the corners might be completely just dominant, and this is a ridiculous pick. But at this point in time, I don't know who the younger long-term option is at cornerback, a critical position that's guaranteed to be a really good football player. Because the younger guys that you have right now haven't shown very much. And again, the, the guys that I you would expect to play really well are kind of older, veteran, expensive type of guys. So... Um, as of right now, Paulson Adebo makes some sense, but again, this is something that needs to be reevaluated after the 2020 season to see if this is really necessary or not. With the 25th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Kyle Pitts, tight end, Florida. A lot of this is going to depend on Jonu Smith. I don't know exactly what Titans fans think of Jonu Smith, but... He had somewhat, at least as far as his PFF grade, he had a bit of a breakout year in 2019, um, although he statistically has not yet cracked that even 500-yard mark. So it's one of those things where, as it stands, Jono Smith is not going to stop me from getting a guy like Kyle Pitts, who I think for Tennessee makes a lot of sense. Again, it's another kind of just smash-mouth, run-the-ball kind of team, and one of the benefits of having a team like that and a running back like Derrick Henry, where you're going to run the ball – and everybody's going to converge because they're terrified of Derrick Henry, is to get a guy, you know, obviously wide receivers are important. You get a tight end to just slip out when everyone's crashing down on Derrick Henry, and you get a guy like Kyle Pitts, who's one of the better tight ends in this draft class, which is a solid tight end draft class. Um, I just think it could be an absolutely dominant thing. I mean, for any team, the Chiefs are, are not that kind of a team. They're not a run-first team, but they dominate with tight ends. So any team that has a really good tight end is typically a team that does really well. I mean, you look at who are the teams with great tight ends. You got the 49ers, you got the Chiefs, uh, the, the the Baltimore Ravens have really good tight ends. It's just, it's a weird thing where they're not really highly valued, but when you have a really good one, the thought of not having that player is just ridiculous. They're one of the key pieces on that team. So 
Um, I don't want to underscore how important it is to get a top-tier tight end for any team, but especially a team like the Tennessee Titans. And again, we'll see what they decide to do with Jonu Smith and, and what he does in year four-ish, I think. Um, but as it stands right now, I like the addition to Kyle of Kyle Pitts to the Tennessee Titans. With the 26th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the New York Jets via the Seattle Seahawks select Wyatt Davis, offensive guard, Ohio State. I know a lot of people want the Jets to take a wide receiver, and nothing would be better than to take that. I shouldn't say that. There's a lot of things that could be better. But to take that Seattle pick and really just have a home run pick with it, whether that be a wide receiver or a, a top-tier defensive player to make up for the guy that we lost. But I, I'm really just – I'm not interested in – trying to slam dunk people right in the face to be like, boom, we got our guy. Look, we're picking at the end of the first. Seattle obviously did very well, which is expected because they're a talented team that has added a key elite defensive piece. Um, and so I'm not I'm not trying to, to slam dunk anything. I just want a really good piece. And Wyatt Davis is one of the better prospects available. We need help along the offensive line. I think that's a bigger need than wide receiver. Again, I'm, I'm just not on board. If, if, if you're a Jets fan that really wants that, explain to me why because i like your wide receivers you know is it is it a contract situation is it what is it that you hate about your wide receivers i don't understand offensive line to me is a critical component that uh is just not very good there and i want to protect my quarterback so that he can get the ball to these pretty decent wide receivers so we're going wyatt davis offensive guard ohio state with the 27th pick in the 2021 nfl draft the buffalo bills select Jay Tufele, defensive tackle, USC. I think the biggest issue, and I know you got Ed Oliver. That's going to be the, the first comment. How could you? We already got Ed Oliver. Because apparently you only have one defensive tackle, right? Look, I'm looking at the front as a whole, and I would rather get a defensive end if there were any. It's just not a very good draft class, at least at this particular point in time. Nobody is looking at this and saying, oh, there's so many edge rushers. You've got some solid edge rushers that are getting very, very old. When these guys leave, what do you have? You've got nobody off the edge. You've got Ed Oliver by himself. I just want to get better up front. And, you know, if I could add an edge rusher, I would. But if it if it means me getting two dominant interior defensive linemen, that's just what I'm going to do. And eventually we'll add an edge rusher. Maybe we'll go out and get somebody in free agency. I don't know. But I want to get better up front. We, we've got other pieces and other areas that look really solid. The defense, I still think, is the cornerstone of this team. It's what makes Buffalo as good as it is. I think that's that's a team identity that is true cross-generationally, right? That's not just a 2020 reality. That is just the Bills in their DNA. It's a defensive team. And so I want to keep that going, and especially up front in the trenches. You know, we, we've got, you know, help with linebacker and, and other positions, but I want to be big and strong and, and dominant up front, and I think Jay Tufele is going to be a really solid player and a good complement to a guy like Ed Oliver. With the 28th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Travis Etienne, running back, Clemson. So I'm, I'm very interested to see what the reaction to this is going to be. Um, in terms of what other needs are there. But but keep in mind, I have Travis Etienne number 16 overall. He has fallen really far. This is a mid-first-round pick, making it all the way to the back. And as much as you might not like a running back in the first, I think paying Connor a, a bigger contract makes less sense. I'd, I'd rather have Etienne than Connor for more money, right? That, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Connor's fine. He, he works fine in the system, but he's not an, an elite prospect by any means. Travis Etienne is going to come in and be dominant. And for the record, I'm a huge Anthony McFarland fan. Anthony McFarland is not an every down back. He's not going to be a workhorse. Um, I think he could be a real good compliment looking at Travis Etienne and Anthony McFarland working in, in combination could be really solid. Um, but I, I, I like it. I, I like the prospect of it. And again, I don't know what's going on with quarterback, and there's so many other things, but I'm looking at it a, at a dominant defense, and I'm looking at a team that, that made it deep into the playoffs, and I'm saying, let's let's go for it, man. Let's keep pushing into this, and I, I think I'm looking for a an offensive component that we don't already have. And I, again, wide receiver is, is an anomaly to me. I don't know what we're doing, but let's, let's pay Juju. Let's bring in ETN. Let's keep Ben on board. Let's keep this defense revved up and, and just give this another shot. And I think with a guy like Travis ETN, we can really blow this thing open. With the 29th pick in the 2021 NFL draft, the Philadelphia Eagles making a deep push into the playoffs here, select K 
Caden Stearns safety, Texas. Even in the unlikely event that uh, Kayvon Wallace, who we just picked up, is an absolute stud, I still think Caden Stearns is a solid uh, addition. He's a great value here. It's going to give us two really good safeties. Again, I doubt Caden Stearns ends up being a stud, but even if he is, it doesn't matter. I want to get more help uh, with our defensive backs. I've been hammering corner, 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 corner to the Philadelphia Eagles because I don't really like your corners, but it's it's the whole group that needs a lot of work. And... Um, I know a lot of Eagles fans have looked at a couple pieces saying this guy could be good, this guy could be good. All right, let's give them a chance, and let's not reach a corner. Let's look at safety, bolster that, give these guys at the corner position a, a chance to really step up, and just, again, we're, we're going back after it. we got some tough competition trying to get to the Super Bowl, but if we got this far, and, and, and in a realistic sense, although I don't expect the Eagles to do this well, they've definitely got some pieces. I mean, they're in the mix to, to make a deep playoff push. And so, again, if I'm... If I'm looking at this saying what went wrong, I'm looking directly at the defensive backs, and that's where I'm going to look to help out this team. With the 30th pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Devonta Smith, wide receiver, Alabama. Um, I, I want to highlight uh, Jamil Jamilbley who's been commenting on every single one of my, my videos for the Kansas City Chiefs, and I really do appreciate that, man. Please keep it coming. But one of the things he said is, I don't expect the Chiefs to take an offensive tackle in the first round, which is what I did last time. He does expect them to look to replace Watkins early, which clearly they're going to move on from Watkins. Um, and to be able to get that real compliment, which obviously the Chiefs haven't really needed it, and, and my preference is to look defense. But again, you look at the board and where it is. You look at the strength of this draft, which is, is strongly in the favor of wide receiver. Devonta Smith has fallen quite a bit to get to this point. And you, you give this team, which... It's one of those things where you say, well, they got to go defense. They got to look at this. They got to look at that. But as soon as they draft a wide receiver, everyone just throws their hands up and goes, well, there goes another Super Bowl for the Chiefs, right? So it, it seems counterintuitive until they do it. And then you just say, well, that's the, how do you, you can't stop this. Travis Kelsey, Tyreek Hill, and now Devonta Smith out of Alabama. We're all in trouble. That's, that's all there is to it. So we're going to go that route. And if anybody has a different thought for the Chiefs, Jamil, I appreciate again your your. Uh, activity in the comments section but if anybody has any thoughts let me know because again i would love for somebody to confirm what i've been saying about needing help on defense nobody's got my back on that but that's all right because again you can't go wrong with this pick with the 31st pick in the 2021 nfl draft the new orleans saints select brevin jordan tight end miami this is largely going to be a value pick. We're picking at 31. Brevin Jordan is at 22. The next best player on this list is pick uh, 32, which is rated about where we're at, and that's Najee Harris running back out of Alabama. There's a couple different directions we can go, but based on value and, and looking to replace uh, Jared Cook, um, it just it just kind of fits. And, and again, we're, we're really close to the end, which means we got – we got to the Super Bowl, right? We lost to the Baltimore Ravens, essentially, in the Super Bowl. And so I'm looking to just add to that. And I think a tight end added to everything that else that we've got that is really strong, that got us there. We're just looking to take us a little bit over the edge. And we're already good enough, right? And and the other direction we could go is starting to look to the future. But let's just go for it, man. Let's just keep pushing on this thing and hope that we can try to win a Super Bowl. I'm adding a tight end, a top tier tight end. There's three guys right now that are first round uh, value. Again, this he's, what, what did I say he was? 16th overall, or no, 22nd overall. So ridiculously valuable. And I think a, a player that for a lot of teams maybe isn't that valuable, but for the Saints to get you to that next level, I think that could be huge. We know what the Saints can do with top tier tight ends. So that's what we're doing. Finally, your Super Bowl champion Baltimore Ravens with the 32nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft select Amon Ra St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. Um, presumably the best of the St. Browns. Um, super excited about Equinemius to see what he can do this year. But, um, I, again, Baltimore is a very, very good team. Baltimore's got the defense could look at some pieces there but you got the defense you got your tight end I really just want to get better at wide receiver and, and and again we'll see what Hollywood does this year but even if he breaks out and just has a dominant year 
I still want that other piece. I want that other wide receiver to give my quarterback some help because I just I don't want this to be he just scrambles all over the place and dominates on the ground because eventually that's not going to pan out. I want him to be able to, to have some really solid weapons. And I think you look at the full body of work with the Baltimore Ravens now with the quarterback, with Hollywood, with the tight ends, with the defense, and now you add Amon Ross St. Brown to the other side. Just domination station, man. So that's it. That is the final pick for the 2021 round or fourth edition. So please make sure you hit that subscribe button. Again, once we get to 2,000 subscribers, I want to get you involved so you can send in your own picks for your team. Otherwise, you folks have yourselves a fantastic day.